first and then and then we'll, we'll get into it okay okay you ready ready cool so first thing you want to do is inspect your area right make sure that it's appropriate for you to drop the trailer here we're going to call this uncoupled okay so i'm looking at everything i'm checking out the parking lot seeing like again if it's like new asphalt and it might sink and stuff like that making sure that it's a safe and, and appropriate area so from there we're going to come over here and remember what i said use those two different acronyms laugh and fall okay laugh laf landing gear airlines fifth wheel fall fal fifth wheel airlines landing gear depending on if you're coupling or uncoupling go off of that area so we've checked the area we know it's secure so the first thing i want to do is my landing gear right i don't want to mess with any of the fifth wheel or any of the airlines or anything like that i want to make sure that the trailer is supported first and foremost so i'm going to go ahead and come to the landing gear if you need to put blocks underneath here you can depending on where you're at and if they require it some places will actually require you to do that in this case we're just going to do this real quick this crank handle is really loose okay so if there's a couple of different styles, the crank handle is either going to be on this side or it's going to be on the other side, depending on the trailer. Sometimes you have to pull them out to lock them in or push them in. There's two gears, okay? There's a high gear and a slow gear, depending on how fast you want the trailer feet to go down. So in this case, this one's going to be a push, so we're going to push this all the way in. And now it's got a little bit more solid there, and I'm going to go ahead and start cranking the landing gear down. here I can only see the first, this leg right here right remember what I said check the other leg too to make sure that that one's going down okay okay so right about there is probably an appropriate amount of distance I don't want to put them all the way down to the ground but I also don't want it too far up okay we just want a little bit of gap there. There's no right or wrong answer, but just a little bit there is fine. Okay, so I've checked both my landing gears here. Both feet are all the way to where they need to be. They both went down. I stowed the crank handle away. You want to inspect your landing gear too to make sure that there's no bends, breaks, or illegal welds or rust or anything like that. Hoping that this trailer, if it's loaded, will be able to be supported by those. Okay, so I did my landing gear. My next step is going to be my airlines and my electrical cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the middle. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my airlines and my electric cord from the trailer, okay? Now, the trailer spring brake should be on since there's no air supplied to it right now, okay? I obviously made sure when I got out of the truck that they were on. But just in case, if you forgot to push that one or pull that one out and set it, as soon as you take off this emergency line, if you, if you have that problem, what will happen is you'll hear a bunch of air hissing out of it and everything. That's okay. It'll automatically set the brakes on the trailer because there's no air supply to it right so you want to make sure that the trailer is the brakes are on if you really question it or if you're worried about it or anything like that you can keep a set of chocks with you right and if you get some wheel chocks and put them under there that is fine too that's just taking an extra step to make sure that you're safe when you're doing that right if you want to chalk the wheels you'll see on docks and stuff like that in yards they'll have chocks that are sitting on the ground and whatnot you can throw that in front of the wheel before that's probably a good practice for you okay so for right now i'm just going to go ahead and take these airlines off on these ones, and most commonly, all of them, you're gonna be pushing up, right, to get these off. If you pull down, it's not gonna do anything. So, just wanna go ahead and hit it up, and then they'll release off of there, okay? These are the rubber grommets that I was telling you about, okay? These can ruin a trip in a hurry, right? And they just peel right out of there. Go to your mechanic or your, your maintenance department, truck stops have them, get yourself a bag of these, keep them in the glove box or something like that, okay? So I've got this one off. I'm gonna go ahead and take my other one off. Same thing, I wanna inspect these, just make sure that they're still good, which in this case they are. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, like I said, you don't wanna just put these on the catwalk. You'll see a lot of guys, if you're tra switching trailers real quick, that's okay, right? That's all right. But most of these are gonna have what are called a stowaway, which are right here place that you can keep these to protect these rubber grommets so same thing you want to line up the hole here it's got a little um, indent here with what we'll call it a nipple you want to line those up and then just pull it down so it goes on like that and then push down right on like this push down okay and that'll keep them at least stowed away there for you and to keep those seals a little bit safe I'm gonna do my electrical cord so I'm gonna pull up on the safety latch here and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this cord out okay 
these pins in here are what I was kind of talking about that if you needed to spread them out because sometimes it doesn't make a good connection into this electrical cord. So within these pins, which you guys will see, there's a little slit there that you can actually get something in there and kind of spread them out so that makes sure it makes contact with this. Sometimes that can be solved with a light issue if you're having on the trailer. Okay, so on the electrical cord, it's got a little groove on the top here. You wanna look at the stowaway up on top, it's got the groove on the side. So all you're gonna do is just set it in there. Okay, if you're hooking up doubles and triples and stuff like that, you might, you're might you gonna have an extra electrical cord. You keep that with you in the truck, that's fine if you want. Um, or you can stow it back here as well. Um, it's entirely up to you. You don't need to mess with it from the tractor side of things, just the trailer, right? Okay, so I've inspected my area. I've dropped my landing gear. I've made sure that I'm disconnected. Brakes are on the trailer. I've chalked the wheels if need be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my last part, which is gonna be the fifth wheel portion, okay? So this is gonna be a Holland style fifth wheel. So it has the normal locking jaws that come around. It's not a J hook or anything like that. So from here, you'll either have in the truck, you'll have a release button or a pull lever or something like that on a newer truck. This truck has a, is a mechanical, so we have to actually pull that handle ourselves down there. So in this case, this is where a good fifth wheel puller so you can save your arm. I don't have one right now, so I'm gonna have to just do this the old way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down and on that release handle, you're gonna give it a good yank, okay? So sometimes they can be a little bit of a pain and tight. You might have to rock the truck back and forth a little bit before it'll break loose to get it going. But ideally you want it to become, come out fairly easy. So you're just gonna grab the handle, give it a good tug. There you go. See how it locks out like that? That means that we're unlocked now, okay? So it'll stay out like that. If you gotta give it kind of a good tug there too. So now we're released from that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get in the truck. We're gonna start it and then I'm gonna pull forward, okay? When I pull forward, I'm feeling, I'm waiting for the trailer to feel it drop. Remember, because we, we have it, it's gonna slide off the skid plate. Once the trailer drops, I'm gonna pull forward about a foot and then I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna look in my mirror and if you want, you can set the brakes and get out and inspect to make sure that the trailer will stay, okay? If the trailer starts moving or if the landing gear is broken, the trailer could fall and if I'm pulled forward a little bit and I stop, then what'll happen is it'll fall down on the frame of the trailer and I can still get back underneath of it. You never just wanna just pull all the way right and fast and everything like that. Make sense? Cool. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. and make sure the trailer would support itself on the landing gear, then I pull forward clear of it. This is a good position now where we can kind of inspect things for our pre-trip side of things to see all the working with parts and stuff like that. Um, so this is your skid plate. Remember, like I said, you don't need a ton of grease. This one's a little greasy. You'll see a lot of, of trucks that have a lot of grease on it. And trust me, there's some grooves and channels there. You don't need very much, okay? This one's got quite a bit of grease on it, but that's all right. So you can kind of see everything a little bit better than when it's not hooked up, right? So you got your release arm there. We've got our slider, okay? If you look at the front fifth wheel on this one, you have a bolt there, okay? You see how the bolt is pushed out, right? Right now, that's another indication that once we connect, that if that bolt is still pushed out, we don't have a good secure lock, right? And that's how you're gonna adjust the locking jaws, but you don't need to worry too much about that right now. Um, this fifth wheel, and some fifth wheels won't have that bolt on there, okay? But this, this fifth wheel, the Holland style fifth wheels will, okay? So that's pretty much it for the disconnecting side of things. Now you would go ahead and post-trip your trailer, make sure that everything's good on that, sign off that you're dropping that trailer off. 
Um, another thing is when we're connecting, we want to look at the trailer to make sure that it's in good shape so that we can connect to it. So remember when we were saying that we don't want the kingpin to be mushroom damaged or cracked or anything like that? This is the kingpin down here, okay? It's attached to the trailer apron and the trailer frame. And that's what you want to inspect to make sure that it's not damaged, right? Because if you've got some damage there, that's your whole entire connectivity to the trailer, okay? So um, you inspect your apron plate and everything, you make sure that it's good and all that before you want to hook up to it, okay? Now, we'll, we'll do this process in reverse now, and we're going to go ahead and connect back to the trailer here. So the first step that you want to do when you find your trailer number and you're going to back up there, to it, okay? I'm going to make sure that there's nothing around that could potentially damage anything or interfere with this hookup. I'm going to chop my wheels, okay, making sure that uh, if the, because you don't know if these brakes back there, the slack adjusters are adjusted properly or something like that, so you could hook up and the trailer could actually move. So it might be a good idea to chop those wheels just for, you know, security reasons on that side of things. You inspect the area and make sure that it's clean of debris. Um, you're going to go ahead and back the trailer up to right about here. Um, where the fifth or back the truck up all the way to the front of the trailer and then you're gonna stop and get out and look okay so I'm gonna do that real quick when I'm backing up with a sleeper cab remember I don't have the window back there so I have to use your mirrors so what I'm gonna be looking for is I want to make sure that the edge of my tires is lined up with the edge of my trailer here okay and that'll be sufficient remember we've got that V channel here so it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as that kingpin can get somewhere within this V channel, it'll track itself up there. So it's normally common when you're backing up, you'll see the trailer kind of move to the side a little bit or something like that. That's completely normal. You haven't done something wrong. If you miss it completely, well, then you could potentially back up into the landing gear, kind of like what you were talking about that you've seen. Um, another thing is you have the airbags on the truck, right? So. A lot of trucks will have what's called a suspension dump. So if this trailer is too low, so when I disconnected, if I left the legs up too high and it dropped really far down and the trailer is really low right now, I can dump my airbags, which will release all the air out of them and it will drop this whole entire frame down, right? So I can get a little bit more clearance underneath there. If it's still too low, you're gonna have to get a hostler or a jack or somebody to help you get that thing up so you can get underneath it, okay? But ideally, if you leave the legs like this, you shouldn't run into that problem for the most part other drivers you can't control what they do so but you have some options remember like I said when those trailers are loaded you are not going to be able to crank those things up right so if it's too low you're not going to be able to get on that crank handle and crank it up it's just too heavy okay you can get them to go down but up is almost impossible okay so hopefully you won't have that issue so as I'm backing up I'm just going to back up to where the trailer is really close to this and then I'm going to get out and inspect it okay trailer up right so remember I was talking earlier um, when we were in the classroom you don't want the trailer to be too high to the point where it's nice and easy for you to come back if you don't feel any resistance or you don't feel the trailer scoop up normally that's going to indicate that we have a problem because on the kingpin if it doesn't sit all the way down in that shank it'll still connect but you could lose it around a turn okay so you want to make sure it's a good feeling when you're in the driver's seat and you're backing up you feel the truck kind of dip down so this is a good way to stop and look and make sure that you're at an appropriate um, height and distance for this this hookup in this case we are so we can see that the trailer fifth wheel skid plate and the trailer are going to skid up together which in turn is going to make sure that kingpin is locked all the way down in the fifth wheel and what i'd be inspecting after that is to make sure that there's no gap between the skid plate and the apron okay that's another warning sign that you're not fully connected okay so from here i've got everything taken care of i'm lined up on this and my tires are on the edge of the trailer here so i know i'm good there I can see that my release arm is ready to be in the lock position. 
Um, my bolt on the fifth wheel plate is out, so good. I've inspected it, made sure that everything is in working order. I've inspected the trailer, making sure that the kingpin's not damaged, making sure that the apron's good. I've got good clearance here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook up to this. So I'm gonna jump back in the truck and I'm gonna back up and I should feel the trailer scoop up. And I'm gonna go back until I feel like I can't go back anymore. Also while monitoring, making sure that if, if I was off track, I wouldn't be hitting the landing gear. So I'd be looking for that in my mirror. But relatively, it'll stop you once you connect in. I don't wanna be super light and dainty about it when I hook up, but I also don't wanna jam it and run into it too hard, okay? But just a good force is, is okay, okay? Otherwise, they won't seat in all the way, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna back up until I feel it lock in, and then from there, I'm gonna do what's called a tug test, okay? I don't, my trailer brakes are on, or my wheels are chalked, all that stuff. I don't have any air supplied to it or anything like that. So ideally, the trailer should not move. It should be able to hold me, so I'm gonna just tug against it. Make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna do that. saw there after I hooked up and went ahead and did that tug test to make sure that she seated it. You saw it and heard it click in and everything like that. Now, don't just trust that. At this point, we need to check everything, okay? So the first thing when we're hooking up, just like we had LAF, now we're gonna do FAL, right? So fifth wheel is my first check, okay? So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go ahead and look and I'm gonna make sure that bolt on the front of the fifth wheel is down. See how it's seated now against the plate? I'm going to check the gap between the fifth wheel skid plate and the uh, apron, making sure that I don't see any daylight running through there. In this case, we're looking pretty good. Um, I also want to make sure that that release handle there is forward, so it's pushed in, which indicates to me that it's in the locked position. Um, what I'll also do is I'll come between the tractor and the trailer right now. And this will be easy to see when you guys do it, but I'm going to help go ahead and look up in there, and I want to make sure that I can see the locking jaws around the kingpin. In this case, I, they are um, successfully around there. And again, I'm checking to make sure I don't see any gaps or anything like that. Okay, and also I wanna check, remember I wanna check the clearance between the back of my tractor and my landing gear back here. And I wanna make sure that I've got appropriate clearance between these two. Because if I was in like a 28 pup trailer or something like that, if you don't have it properly, you know, clearance wise with your fifth wheel slide, then what happens is you go around a turn and you can actually hit the back of the landing gear with your tires and stuff. And not a good day. So when, in this case, we do have an appropriate clearance between there, so we're good there. So I've checked everything, made sure that it's all locked and everything's in a good position. A good flashlight, you can, it'll help you see when you look up here, but we're good. I'm, I'm happy with that, okay? So from here, I'm gonna do A. So I'm gonna do airlines and electrical. So I'm just gonna repeat the process. There's no right or wrong order to do this in. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna do my electrical work first. I'm gonna look in here and make sure that there's nothing obstructing these uh, holes for the pins to go in. I'm gonna check these pins, making sure that they're, they're appropriate and everything's in working order. If I need to spread them out, I'll figure that out later. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the channel on the top here with the electrical cord, and I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in, and I'm gonna make sure that the safety latch is down. Again, checking the wires here, making sure that there's no cuts, frays, or exposed wires. And I also wanna to check to make sure that once I get everything hooked up, like the airlines and electrical cord, they're not hanging too low to the point where it could rub on something, cut or break it or anything like that. I'm gonna check these rubber grommets that are on the glad hands, and I wanna make sure that they're in good safe working order, which in this case they are, they're not dry rotted or weather cracked or any damage to them and stuff like that, okay? So I'm gonna take my air hoses from the stowaway position. Pretty simple here, red to red, blue to blue, okay? Now, sometimes the trailers are really old and you can't really tell on those. So the way you can tell is if you hook them up backwards, you ain't moving, right? So the trailer brakes will not release if you hook them up backwards. Okay, in this case, we have clear identification that red's here and blue's here. I've got a red handle and I've got a blue handle. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Okay, when you're hooking these up, the easiest way to do it, always line up your gasket first. Don't worry about the channel or anything like that. You wanna start from the top, go ahead and line that up there. 
and then all you're gonna do is come down with it, right? Sometimes you need to give it a good little hit to get them down. In this case, it went on nice and smooth. I wanna check to make sure that my alignment is good between there. If you have a hammer, sometimes you can tap it if you need to get it into a better alignment, if it's off a little bit, because sometimes they won't sit perfectly. In this case, we're all right. So got my service line there connected. Now I'm gonna take my emergency line. Again, checking my rubber grommets here, checking this as well. Same thing, I'm gonna go ahead, match up the O-rings here, making sure that they're seated together, and then I'm just gonna bring it down, all right? Again, checking the alignment of everything, making sure that it's good. In this case, they're free. I'm gonna check to make sure they're not hanging down too low. I'm gonna check the tractor side to make sure that they're connected. My electrical cord and safety latch is there as well, okay? Um, I think we're all right. It's tethered up here good, cool. So we've checked our fifth wheel. Now we've done our airlines. Next would be the landing gear, okay? So simply, all I'm gonna do is go crank that handle and get it all the way up, right? I'm not gonna do it because we're gonna be disconnecting and connecting with you guys, So, but you would just bring the landing gear all the way up and then you should be good. And at this point, you're gonna pre-trip the trailer. You're gonna check all the lights. You're gonna make sure, so when you get out of the truck, you hook up to it, it's a good idea. Turn your lights on, turn the four ways on. That way you can just make one pass all the way around, right? And you're gonna check all your lights. You're gonna check everything before you go. You're gonna do a pre-trip on your trailer. You're gonna sign into whatever electronic log that you're, you're gonna be taking care of that trailer and then you're good to go. So any questions? Cool.